Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is our first talk, basically, well, our first official talk of um, this series where I'm going to show you all about my um, running a uh, successful wedding business and portrait studio. Um, so, you know, just let me bring up the chat. I'll, I'll probably, like I said, usually like I do, I'll cut this out when um, this is all running. I'm just going to see if this updates. Yeah, it's come up th through there now. So just say hi if you are watching. Um, we can have a bit of a discussion as we're sort of going on. Um, today's exercise is going to be all about the hardware. Now I'm going to do this in a few steps. I don't want to make these too long, so I'm going to keep these down um, reasonably short. So, you know, hopefully less than half an hour. Um, but today we're going to look at um, cameras in the fact that, well, gear, uh, we're going to look at what gear you need with cameras and lenses. So we're going to look at that today. And then later on, like tomorrow, we'll start to look at other things like off-camera flash uh, that's used and things like that. And we're going to build this series uh, from there, and basically it's going to go through everything that I do. So we're going to go through pricing, um, we're going to look at how I build my website, um, what management software that I use. So we're going to look at a whole stack of things um, in how to run a business. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to hide anything from you guys. I'm going to talk to you about contracts. I'm going to talk to you about everything. Um, so today, and like I said, I'll be doing this every day at this time, just so you can sort of see it, which, um, well, what is it? It's um, nine o'clock uh, US, uh, Australia time. I'll just let you know, just so you know, in case if you want to watch this tomorrow live. Los Angeles, it's four o'clock, so it'll be four o'clock p.m. tomorrow, and New York, it's 7.05. So if you did want to watch um, live, you can look at those times tomorrow, and I'll be doing um, part two of this if you did want to uh, join the discussion. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, cameras that we use. Now, as you know, I am, I'm a Sony shooter, but I don't want to relate this just to Sony. I will show you the gear that I'm using, but I wanted to keep this as general. So uh, we'll be looking at all different camera manufacturers, what, what I think you need to sort of start, uh, things like that. So we'll get started now. And um, just say hi too if you are uh, watching so we can have a bit of a chat. Uh, questions I'll probably answer near the end because um, I'll, I'll try and keep this moving a little bit. If I see something that's relative to it though, I will. Uh, stop for you guys um, so we can sort of see so I'm just going to bring up um, Photoshop because I want to do this just with my pen I'm just going to discuss this with you um, now let me just make this a little bit bigger <laughs> okay that'll do anyway all right so I'm just going to do this with a pen, just so we can sort of talk about it that way. So I'll do it more like it's a traditional um, uh, sort of class. So I'm just gonna talk about gear. I might make this even a bit smaller because I want to talk to you about um, how you, the type of gear really, well, it, it, it does matter, but I want to sort of make it so that you can um, not be so gear related, but th this, it can also be that it's going to talk about gear generally, and, and I want to sort of explain to you that really the gear doesn't matter so much. It's more about you know what you learn up here is the thing that really matters. So I'm going to sort of take you through that. But the gear, obviously, like, like I said, I use is Sony, and I'll be showing you the gear that I use as well. But I want you to understand that there's no reason why you can't use and you can successfully use heaps of other gear. You know, even including things like. Panasonic and Fuji, all these other companies as well. So we're going to look at that as well. Um, I will probably tailor some of it more towards Sony because that's the gear that I can personally show you. Um, but, you know, we'll see how we go. Oh, thank you so much, Delta Dave. Just did a donation. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, so I want to sort of talk to you about gear today. Now, now there's two different type of gear that, that people are using in this, in this industry, and it's digital SLR and mirrorless. Now, they're the two main things in the industry that's being used um, for wedding and portrait photography at the moment. Hi, Chad, how are you? Hi, Marcus, nice to see you. Hi, Tony. Um, now, the, this, the market tends to be switching. Now, at the moment, it's still very, very digital SLR. And there's a reason for that. That's been around for so long from film days and it's just transferred over to digital. Um, and basically everyone's comfortable with that type of technology. I've moved more to this mirrorless, and there's reasons why I've done that. Now, we'll talk about that now, but there's reasons why I did it was mostly because of weight 
And as I'm getting older, I was just getting too sore lugging around all this heavy gear. So I've tended to go more towards the mirrorless area. Um, but like I said, I'm going to talk to you about this as a generalist type thing. So I will talk about how it affects me because clearly I'm showing you how my business runs. Um, but I don't want you to just think this is just a Sony thing. It's not. But I will be, like I said, relating it to Sony a lot because... Um, I come from that background. So please don't think I'm bashing other cameras or whatever, because any camera is good enough. Um, but I have to relate it to, to you know, to what I use. Um, so let's look at a, a few of the digital camera markets uh, that are out there. So if, if I just switch over to here for a second, um, I'm going to go through, let's look first at Nikon. Now this is, Nikon is where I came from. So Nikon was, um, I had a, a full Nikon setup <clears throat> when I first started. I was using the D4S and the D810, um, and I had that many lenses. I think it was around $50,000 worth of gear. I was really, really up there in their gear. I sold all of that for the Sony gear because, like I said, it, for me it was um, more about the weight and the technology just wasn't there. I just wasn't happy with how Nikon were innovating, so I've changed. But Nikon is still fantastic. I mean, basically, a lot of the time they were using Sony sensors anyway, um, so they were st still fantastic. But the thing that I want you to consider is that when you're looking at gear, you really should try and, and afford the best one that you can because there's so many cameras that you can actually... Um, uh, purchase that when you you know you're going through these but you don't need to go out and buy if you're starting in wedding photography or, or portrait studios you don't need to be say buying a d4s immediately there's no reasons why you can't get some of the the cheaper cameras to start uh you know like a d500 and then buy some decent lenses the problem is if you go right up to the top you're not going to be able to afford to probably buy some lenses so um you might be better off to spend a little bit less on the body and then go through and buy a um, you know a better quality lens. So these are all the Nikon cameras that you know that you'll be using. But I'm not going to go through all brands and which one you should be getting because to be honest, if you're just starting out at this stage, you can you can start shooting wedding photography with with any of these cameras, and they're all going to be acceptable. And remember, you have to start somewhere and build up your profile. So you know it's important. The same thing with with Canon as well. Um, if we go over to Canon. Uh, that's the same with Canon as well. I mean, you don't need to go out and buy, you know, an Mark, an EOS 1DX Mark II immediately. You know, there's no reasons why you can't go out and buy a 6D or something like that. I just want to sort of talk to you about the main brands that are available at this stage. So clearly, we have Canon, we have Nikon, uh, and we also have Sony in the full frame market as well. Um, the, it depends really which way that you'd like to go. I'm just going to switch out of here back to Photoshop for a minute. Um, so <clears throat> what you have to do though is you need to make sure in the beginning that you do need to choose either a digital SLR or a mirrorless. Like it's very, very hard to switch and it can cost you a lot of money if they make the wrong decision. So I'd be tending to try if you can uh, to, to make a decision in the beginning. Look at both of these um, cameras and then see which one you think fits you best at this stage. Now I have to be honest, if, if I was starting I probably would tend to look at mirrorless now but that's me because I think they're innovating more than what Nikon and Canon are. But you may find that Nikon and Canon fairly soon also release mirrorless cameras as well, so they're also going to be in the market too. Um, but, you know, you know, I'd like to sort of talk about that. So let me just delete these and we'll keep talking. So when you're talking about it, if you're looking at um, your digital SLR, that, well, the main two that you can do are obviously Nikon and Canon. So they're the main two that you could use. Now, I think obviously in the marketplace, Canon is number one, all right, and Nikon would be number two if you're dealing with with that. Now there is other brands obviously out there like you've got Pentax, you've got other brands as well but to be honest if you're just starting out. Now guys if you are watching this remember um, I'm, this, is, this is starting from the real beginning so people that do know all about this obviously this is going to be probably a little bit yeah I know all this already well just bear with me because eventually as we start going through this you'll start to learn more about the business side and things like that so just bear with me uh, with that. Um, yes Delta Dave glass 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 is the important thing. Um, and like I'm saying 
too, that the other thing is too, that don't forget that if you're starting in wedding photography, you need two of these, you need backup. All right, you've got to have a backup system. Now that doesn't mean that you need two of the same cameras. So for instance, if you were buying a Nikon, it doesn't mean that you'll need you know, two D4Ss. You can quite easily have a more high-end camera and then buy a cheaper camera just as a backup. That backup is only in case if something goes wrong. Now I have dropped one of my cameras. I actually dropped uh, when I had my D810 and my D4S, I dropped the D810 and it broke. Um, the, where the lens mounts on uh, the camera, it was a 72-200. I dropped it in front of the bride. I just pretended like it didn't bother me, but inside I was going, oh no. But if I hadn't had a backup camera, I would have been in all sorts of trouble. So whatever you do, just make sure that you have a backup system there of everything. And I'll, I'll keep reinforcing that as we go through. Um, because it's really, really important that you don't go in thinking, and I've seen this a lot, I've seen a lot of new photographers starting out doing weddings and they've only got one camera and it, it makes my skin crawl because, it, you know, if something happened, uh, you're in big trouble. So what you've got to decide is you've got to decide whether you'd like to go, if you were talking about digital SLRs, you've got to really decide whether you'd like to go Nikon or Canon. Um, you could go Sony too, uh, their uh, Alpha series, but I'm, I'm going to keep it with the two big ones here of Nikon and Canon. Um, and then you, you would have to start thinking about your backup um, as well. And just remember, that's just starting with bodies. Then you have to start thinking about lenses as well. But I'm, I'm just talking about bodies at this stage. Um, so I'll, we'll look at mirrorless because I'd like to talk to you about that as well. And um, oops, F5. So let's look at mirrorless. We'll look at the main players that are out there. So we're looking at really the main ones are Sony and you've got Panasonic and Olympus. And Fuji. Now I'm gonna go over to this website again and we'll look at some of those. Um, because they're all really good systems as well. So if you're looking at Olympus, um, the, there's quite a, a few good cameras. You've got the EM Mark II, the EM1, and the EM1 Mark II. So they're all really good cameras as well, and you know they have a full range of different bodies that you could buy as well. And again, I'm not going to talk about the benefits or the or you know what's good or what's bad about all these systems. At this stage, I'm just going to talk about what's out there and what's available. Um, Lumix, obviously you've got the GH5, um, things like that as well that you can use too. Uh, there's stacks of different bodies as well you can go through with Lumix. And Fujifilm, um, you've got, um, well you've got the GFX50 but that's more, uh, more um, uh, it's a different system. Uh, you've also got things like the X-Pro2 and the X-T2. Yeah, medium format, I think the GFX is, or nearly medium format. So Fuji also is a, rel a very relative uh, system as well um, for, um, for cameras. Now, if you're looking at winning, I'm just going to be honest here and talk to you about what I think you should be sort of buying if you're moving into this area to do wedding photography. So if you're looking at the main ones in, in the industry at the moment, Sony would be number one if you're talking about now, I think, in the wedding uh, industry and portrait industry, and Fuji probably is number two. Now, I don't have figures of this. I'm just doing this as a guess, a guess about what I think that where it is at the moment. Clearly I've got more along the Fuji sign because Fuji, the main difference here with the Sony is that this is full frame. All right, so the Sony is full frame. Now that is a big thing for me because it means that you get better depth of field so and also better low light. So that is a big thing for me and that's the reason why I switched to Sony when I did because at the time, well they still are, they're still the only full frame Sony, uh, uh, mirrorless camera so that's a big thing for me whereas the Panasonic the Olympus and the Fuji are all using different sensors I think the Fuji's APS-C size and Olympus is um, um, micro four-thirds so they're all different size sensors and also the Panasonic is micro four-thirds um, so for me personally that has issues with things like noise um, it also has issues uh, with things like uh, depth of field because you get much better separation if you're using full frame as against um, 
things like the APS-C size lenses and things like that. So that's important for me. But I do use both because the Sony cameras that I use, I use an APS-C camera, which is the A6500 and the A6300, and I also use full frame, so I am using both. I did previously own a Panasonic GH4, um, but I sold that due to the fact that it's very, very hard to use multiple systems. And that's one thing that I can say to you guys, just be very, very careful about what you choose in this scenario because it's very, very hard to use two different systems together. Now, say for instance, you wanted to use the Sony for stills and then you wanted to use a Panasonic for video, it gets very confusing if you have to move quick because the menu systems are totally different, everything's completely different. And I, find, I found that that didn't work for me. So what you're gonna have to do is try to um, use the same system that has very, very similar setups in them and you can set them the same. Also the files look very, very similar and you're not going between two different bodies. With weddings particularly, you're working very, very fast. So if you are working that fast, you need to be able to change things very, very quickly. And if you're fiddling around with trying to work out what setting you use, what menu you've got to go into, um, things like that, it can be, you know, it can be really, really hard. So th that's the thing I'm saying at this stage. So this is the point that I'm trying to make to you. If you are seriously considering getting into this, this business, make sure you do settle, settle on one system particularly. And I've sort of listed the ones, the main ones that are out there. You're going to have to make a decision yourself um, which way you'd like to go. Now, clearly, if it was me that was saying which way to go, I'd be promoting Sony. But I'm not saying that Sony is the best at this. It's best for me. And that's why I probably will always go back to Sony. But if something better came along, guys, I would change immediately. At the moment, Sony is best for me. But you have to make your own decision by going to camera shops, uh, workshops, things like that, feeling these different cameras and seeing how they fit you before you actually start. But remember, you need two bodies. So don't start doing wedding photography. You can start building your profile, and we'll talk about that later on in the in the in episodes to come. But you can have one camera if you're second shooting for someone. Um, but if you're going to do this and actually take on a, a job, make sure you do have two bodies and duplicates of lenses in case if you have issues. Uh, and that's the really important thing. So how are we going for time? Yep, another 10 minutes or so, and then we're gonna finish today. Um, so let's look now at lenses, all right? Because this is an incredibly important part. All right, so. Now, this is more important than the body. Um, I'm just gonna read up here for a second. John, uh, Delta Dave said, glass, glass, glass. Yes, yeah, that's so true. Chad said, hi, hi, Chad. John Lambert said, for weddings particularly, is it worth the extra expense of getting the A9 over the A7R2 for a second body? Um, I wouldn't buy the A9 as a second body, uh, John. I mean, the, the thing with it is, um, if you're going to do it, I've got the A7R2 and the A9, yes, and I've got the A7R2 as a second body. I think that's what you mean, and that's the way I'm now running. Uh, the A9 will be my primary camera, and the A7R2 will be my secondary body. Um, yeah, and that's a great way of doing it. So if you can afford it, yeah, it, it would be fantastic. Actually, yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, the A7R2 is a great one for your second body, and I'll talk about those a bit later when we start talking about how I shoot the weddings, um, because when we go into... Um, later lessons, I'll actually take you through the day about what I, what I photograph and how it's done. Um, so we'll look at that then. Um, Delta Dave said, how much importance do you put on dual card slots? Well, the funny thing was, Delta Dave, I've never ever had a card slot go to me, go bad on me, uh, ever yet. Um, but I must admit now that I'm using the A9, I, it's, sometimes I think, oh, well, if that did ever happen, I've got now a backup. Uh, but it never, ha it never was an issue before. Um, so, but I've been lucky too. I've always had second shooters and third shooters um, with me, so that, that's the thing with me. I've always had backup in case if something went wrong. If you were shooting on your own, and a lot of you remember might be if you're starting out in this industry, having dual cards may be a big thing because if you did then have a card fail, you would be in big trouble because you've got no backup. Um, I've always got a second shooter that's shooting from a different angle than me, but they're still getting similar shots. So if my camera did fail, uh, with a single uh, card, it's not such a big deal. It still wouldn't be good, but it's not such a big deal. I've always got backup coming from somewhere else. And to be honest, that has saved me. Sometimes I have missed something. Like, I actually missed a first kiss once because I was trying to do something. I can't remember what it was, but I, I went up. They kissed very, very quickly, a lot quicker than what I expected, and I missed that first kiss, whereas my second shooter got it. So it, it can be an issue in that case. Um, but, yeah. 
Um, Tim Bricks said, what's a good lens for portraits that is a decent price, Canon preferably? Um, well, I'm not sure about the Canon lenses, uh, Tiny. Someone in here may be able to chime in um, because I've never, used, I've never shot Canon, I've shot Nikon. Um, but to be totally honest, if you can, I'd, I'd skimp on the body and go more for the, a good lens. Lenses are the most critical thing that you'll find with your photography. A lens can make so much difference, uh, and we're going to talk about which ones I use now, but if you're using good gear and good lenses, you will always replace your camera bodies. And just remember that, camera bodies are disposable, lenses aren't. Lenses you'll probably keep forever. Um, and you may, if you spend an awful lot of money, there's no reason ever to change them unless you know you need something else. So I'd always spend more on um, decent lenses. So uh, Tiny, if, if someone here in the um, chat group can talk about that, um, let give him some um, ideas, guys. Because like I said, I'm not sure with Canon. Um, so lenses. So let's talk about. I'm going now. I'm going to talk about generally here for weddings. The the main lenses that you'll need to use if you've got a weddings. There's three main ones that we're going to talk about, and it's a 70 to 200 millimeter. You've got the 24 to 70, and you've got the well. In the case of Sony, it's 16 to 35 millimeter. Now I've got the f/4 version of all of these lenses and I'll talk about that in a second, but I've got the F4 version of all of these lenses. Um, they now have 2.8 versions of these lenses. Now, for me, it's not a big I I deal because, to be honest, remember I said early on that I changed due to weight. Now, the, the 2.8 versions of these lenses clearly are better than the F4 versions, but I'm quite comfortable and quite happy with what the F4 versions give me. Um, they're incredibly sharp, with the latest cameras, you can always raise the ISO, so F4 to me has never been an issue. Uh, and if it is, I use prime lenses, and I'll talk about that in a second, because these are all zoom. All right, so these are all zoom lenses. So with the, with the zooms, um, and to be honest, I've moved more away from zooms now. I'm going more to primes, but I'll talk about these anyway. So at 70 to 200, basically, you know, is, is a typical, this looks like a Canon lens, actually. Um, now, this is the F4 version. Um, you know, you, you've got your manual focus on these. You have um, whether you want full focusing or, or close up. Um, you've got image stabilization on these. Um, and you've got um, the, the mode to, depending on whether you've got this on a tripod or whether you're zooming it and, around and stuff like that. So this is the 70 to 200. Uh, I can't show you the 2470 because that's what I'm filming with right now on the A6300 up here. Um, but I have the 16 to 34. Um, my lenses are always marked because I'm just so rough with gear. And that's the thing with me, I am rough with gear. I don't use lens caps when I'm working. I just throw them in the bags. Um, you know, I'm pretty rough with them because I just want to be able to just grab stuff out of the case very, very quickly. And um, so they're always scuffed and stuff like that. I mean, they still work fantastic, but th this is the 16 to 35. Um, and like I said, I can't show you the 2470 because um, it's um, on this camera that I'm using right now. Um, so th the main thing is I do tend to still use the 70 to 200 quite a bit, but if, if we're dealing with compression, that's the main time that I'll use the 70 to 200. If I wanted to bring, and I'm just gonna draw a little diagram here because it's, I'll show you anyway, but um, it'll give you an idea of what I mean. Um, if, if I wanted to, if I had the same, now you're gonna laugh at my drawing, but we'll just have a look. If I had a person that was standing here and there's a mountain in the background, if I shot it with the 70 to 200, it would bring the mountain very, very close. So it, it sort of compresses that background very, very close. So this would be the 70 to 200 millimeter. All right, now if I used a wide angle lens, it would be like this. And it's the same shot, remember, this is exactly the same shot between the two, but the mountain would look like it was a long way away. And this would be, say, the 16 to 35. So they're both totally different in the way that they look. If you want to bring something really in from the background and show that compression, you use something like a 70 to 200. Also, it can also affect the bokeh as well, because if you use something like a 70 to 200, the background will be blurred beautifully away. So you have to think about this when you're, still, when you're doing your shooting. This one, this 16 one here is more environmental. It'll show more of the environment. Whereas your 70 to 200 will bring that environment in. Um, 
and again, ask some questions, guys, if you have any questions about this. Um, and that's the main difference between the two. And I, that, so I will use a 70 to 200 quite a bit if I want to sort of bring that compression in and blur out the background, you know, get that beautiful looking background. 16 to 35, I often use if I want to have an environmental shot, like bring the environment actually in. Or if I have big groups, for instance, at the end of each ceremony, I always photograph the whole group, the whole wedding party, that's everyone that's at the, the ceremony. Well, I need a very wide lens to fit everyone in because if you're talking about 100, 200 people, uh, you need to have, excuse me, you need to have a very wide lens that can fit all these people in. Um, so that's an important thing as well. So lens selection is really important. Um, to me, but they're the main prime ones that are out there. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, Zoom, sorry, they're the main Zooms that are out there. And now we'll look at primes because I'll talk to you about what primes I use. So let's go to primes. Now primes, all they are is they just don't Zoom. Um, Chris, Sebastian said the 50 1.4. Is that for the um, Canon, is it, Sebastian? Is that the one you were saying? Um, so the main primes that I use are the uh, 35 um, 1.4 millimeter, and I have the uh, 55 1.8. I also use the um, 85 1.8. Now that's, the, I'm talking about full frame lenses here and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. All right, they're full frame lenses because remember they're different. You can, the good thing with Sony, you can use the APS-C uh, lenses on the uh, full frame and you can use the, the full frame on the APS-C. That's one advantage about the Sony system. Um, but they're the main ones that I use. So th this is the baddest, obviously. This is the 85 mil, um, 1.8. Fantastic sharp lens. That this is uh, a Battus. Now there is a Sony version of this. All right, that's the Battus, but there also is a Sony version of it as well. And there's a Sony. There's a, a 1.8, and there's also a 1.4. Just depends really on how much you want to spend. To be honest, if I was buying any lens now and I hadn't got the Battus, I'd probably just go for this Sony 1.8. Uh, it's a very very cheap lens. It's around about five six hundred dollars, I think. Uh, and it's incredibly sharp. It's probably just as good as the Battus. Um, thank you, Sebastian. Thanks for answering that. Um, so they're the main things now. Uh, I've got my picture in front of that. Um, they're the main prime lenses. Now, the reasons why I've gone prime, because, for instance, I don't want to be lugging around these big lenses. I prefer this tiny, these tiny lenses over... Um, where's the 55? That's it there. That's the 55. You know, I'd, I'd much prefer using these these really, really small lenses against using um, these large lenses because at the end of the day, if you're doing 15, 16 hours, and that's often sometimes what I'm doing for weddings, I don't want to be lugging around these massive um, lenses because I get a sore back at the end of the day and, and you know as I get older and older it's getting harder and harder whereas if I'm using prime lenses I don't have sore backs anymore it's not affecting me at all and to be honest I also love that look I love shooting that wide open and, and like if I can shoot at 1.8 I just adore that look uh, so I am tending to use more and more primes the 35 mil this one here is my favorite focal length I love shooting 35 because it's basically what your eye sees. Um, so when you're looking out now, like I am now, you're sort of seeing that 35 mil view with your eyes. So it's it's a it's a it's a, a, a sort of size that I'm comfortable with looking at, and I love that type of look about it. So I'll be using that for an awful lot of shots. Now in the coming episodes, I will be talking about uh, where I use each lens. So I will be bringing that in the coming episode. So we'll go through that too, guys. Like I said, this is all going to be expanded. Today is a real beginner stuff. Um, and tomorrow we'll be just talking about flash. But after that, we'll start to get more into the nitty gritty of how the wedding business works and what lenses I use where and things like that. Um, Sebastian said that's the Zeiss. Yes, it is, uh, Sebastian. Yeah, it's uh, the Zeiss Battus. Yeah. Now, the, well, I said in there that if I was buying a new one, I, I'd buy the Sony 1.8. The Battus has some interesting things because it is stabilized. That's number one. Plus, it's also weather sealed, uh, whereas the Sony isn't. So it can be an issue. So you still do get more by getting the Battus over 
um, the Sony. If you're doing it for video like I do, uh, you're getting an extra thing of stabilization and it does have weather sealing. So that, that's an interesting thing as well. So they're the main things uh, with the lenses. Now remember, these are full frame. Now I'll talk about the APS-C lenses that I use. Oh, where is it? Now the APS-C that I'm doing, um, this would be like if you're using Fuji, but I'm just talking about the, the Sony. I'm, I use two of them. I use the Sony A6300 and I use the Sony A6500. So they're the ones that I'm using at the moment. Now the main lenses that I use, the, the, my favorite is the 24mm 1.8 um, lens, and I'll talk about these in a second. Uh, the other one that I have is the um, 30, I use the 10, 18 to 105 millimeter. I think that's an F4. And that, that'll do because they're the main two that I use at this stage. To be honest, I use those full frame lenses all the time that I just showed you before on my uh, Sony a6500. I often run the Batis on that. I just posted a video the other day that was running the Batis on that lens. Um, so, you know, they're the main ones. This one is my favorite uh, the, of any lens that I've got, to be honest. Uh, well, I also like the 35 1.4, but I love this 24 1.8. It is so incredibly sharp. Um, the 1.8 on the APS-C is lovely. Um, and it's so tiny, uh, it's actually this one. So, you know, it's, it's such a small, beautiful lens to use. It's not stabilized, but the camera's stabilized anyway, um, but incredibly sharp. Now, it's not cheap. I think it's, it's around about $1,000 Australian. But remember, with lenses, you do often get what you pay for. So you do have to sort of think about that when you're buying lenses. It, it can be expensive. But remember, I'm not going to sell this. I'll keep this. There's no reason for me to sell this. I'll be keeping this a long time. I will change my bodies, but I'll be keeping lenses. That's why I'm saying if you're struggling for money, um, don't go so much on bodies. Go more on your lenses, guys, because it's, you know, it's really important that you um, do that. So they're the main lenses that, that I'm actually using. Um, I do have some others. I think this is 16 mil as well. I think it's the 16. I can't remember. I haven't used it for a while. It's a 16 millimeter f2.8, I think. Uh, that's in the other room though. I very rarely get that out. It's a very wide one. Um, but like I said, most of the time I'm using my APS-C lenses uh, there as well. Um, so do you have any quick questions? Because that, that I'm gonna end in a minute because that's half over half an hour. Tomorrow I'm going to start talking to you about um, light that I use. And we're gonna look at um, flashes that I use. We'll look at continuous light and uh, as against using strobe light. Um, off-camera flash, stuff like that. So we'll start talking about that tomorrow. And then once we've done that, I've also got things down here like what bags I use, um, also other equipment like what camera straps that I use as well that we can talk about in another episode as well. And then clearly as we go on, we'll start to get into more of the business side of, of things uh, as well. Now I've got a stack of people left questions yesterday, which I've noted down. If you have got questions that you'd like me to answer uh, going through this whole episode about how I run my business, please leave them in the questions because um, it, it's really important that um, I know what you guys sort of want me to, to sort of teach you and it'll, it'll give me ideas about, you know, what you'd like to learn as well. Um, if you can too, please give me a thumbs up because I'd love people to be getting on board with this and, and watch. So if you can, give me a thumbs up. Obviously subscribe. I'll be running this again at the same time tomorrow. And we'll, like I said, tomorrow we'll start going through the flash, uh, flash systems that I use uh, and we'll talk about that. And like I said, a little bit later on, I'll actually show you in some shoots how each uh, gear is used and I'll take you through that, how I shoot the whole wedding. So we'll go through all of that stuff. This is just the beginning stuff for people that really um, haven't got much knowledge. So I know a lot of you guys are actually shooting guys. Um, so you'll just have to put up with this first couple of episodes um, uh, before we get started in more of the nitty gritty, but we had to start with the basics before we sort of move on. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. So do we have any questions, guys, before we finish? Don't forget, if you are leaving questions about um, uh, that you want me to cover, leave those in the questions below. Don't leave those in this chat because um, it's gone once I 
uh, turn this off. So make sure you put them in the chat uh, down below. Um, I've got a question here. With F4, how much can you push high IASO to have nice prints for wedding albums? Um, I easily go up to 6400 um, with the cameras that I'm using. That's one of the benefits with the Sony. Um, I tend to try and not go over 3200, but to be honest, I've never really had to go much over that. If, if it's going to be an issue, this is why I always carry primes, and this, to be honest, is why I've now started shooting primes, because it's no issue to immediately go down to f1.8 or f1.4. Um, the area where, with Sony's, that it can be an issue um, is that um, the ISO is not a real problem. It's the low-light focusing can be an issue if you're dealing with the older cameras. I've just bought, the uh, obviously, the A9. Um, the low light focusing on this has been amazing. This is the first time I've been able to use a camera that had the same focusing I had, well it's actually better than I had with my D4S, um, and that's low light focusing. So for the first time in the Sony system, I've been able to um, focus under really low light. So it's not really the ISO um, that's been a problem with these cameras, it's been more the focusing in low light has been an issue uh, with, with say the Sony A7IIs, which is what I use. Um, this is the A7 II here, um, and this has got the 35mm uh, f2.8, great lens on it. Um, if I'm trying to focus with this in low light, it really, it sort of struggles. It will actually um, start to have issues. So you have to put very fast glass on, and then it will focus not too bad. So you do have to learn sometimes about the system and how it works best for you. I've worked out that if I use center focus on this, um, recompose the shot and use fast glass, I can get by with the autofocus. Uh, if, if I don't do that, if I try to use face detect or whatever on these cameras, it's going to have an issue. The A9 doesn't have those issues, um, so it's changed. So it's not, not really the uh, ISO for noise that's an issue. Like I said, I can shoot up to 6400 as long as you expose correctly. The important thing with exposing with these is if you're going to use high ISO, you really can't shoot to the left or right, you really have to nail the exposure. If you do that, noise is not gonna be a problem. But if you start to have to push it later in post, noise becomes an issue. Um, the A9 uh, uh, is, tends to be really good and so does the A7R2, but uh, others have a bit of an issue. So yeah, it's, that's not really a, a problem talking about high ISO, 6400 if you expose correctly. Um, John Lambert said, thank you again for your time. That's my pleasure, uh, John. These are gonna be really, it's gonna be fun talking to you guys all about this stuff. I'm really excited about doing it, especially when we start to go through all the marketing and how I set up my web pages and uh, ordering online and stuff like that. Um, what about action cams for video? Well, yeah, I do use action cams. I, I, I use GoPro, but to be honest, I don't use them much anymore. Um, I have got two of them. Uh, I've got the newest one and the one before that. Um, but now that I'm just using the A6500 and the A6300 uh, as video, um, yeah, so I don't use that. If I had to do something that was really, really wide, I could still use the GoPro because it is such a massive wide angle. Or if I had to do something in the water, it might be a, you know advantage using a GoPro. Uh, apart from that, I don't use them, but I have got them. Yeah, and I've got all the attachments like for attaching to cars if I wanted to do that for video and things like that uh, as well. I probably should list that down because I'll talk to you about where I do that later. Um, So just make sure that you, um, like I said, put these sort of questions down in the comment box below and we, and we can go through that. Um, Michael Becker said, how heavy is the 18 to 105? It's, I actually haven't got it here. It's, pr it's pretty light. It's, it's actually incredibly light, really, for the size that it is. The other advantage, too, is it doesn't move in and out when you focus. So if you're putting it on a gimbal and stuff, it works really, really well. Um, but, yeah, it's not heavy at all, Michael. I'm not sure about the weight, but it's, it's not heavy. Um, I... I am what I am said, okay, thanks so much. What prime, uh, with primes, okay. With zooms, F4, a little bit difficult. Yeah, th and that's the thing with the F4 zooms, if you are sticking with F4, low light focusing in weddings is not good. And that's why um, you have to have decent primes, guys. So if you are starting out in wedding photography, it's fine to go for F4 zooms, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. And I use that all the time, but you must have at least one fast prime. Uh, and that's why I use the 35 1.4. Um, so if it's an issue, I can always change that. For instance, receptions, I'm always shooting with the 35 1.4. And again, I'll talk to you all about this when we go through how I shoot receptions and stuff like that. Um, Delta Dave said, uh, do you use your drone during weddings? Yes, I do. And I'm going to mark that down as well, because that's a good one as well. 
Uh, yeah, I have the Phantom 4 that I use, um, and I'm starting to use that more and more and more in my wedding videos, and I'll talk to you about that when I start to go through Fusion and things, uh, Delta Dave Dave, so we'll go through that as well. All right, guys, I've gone over time again. Uh, <laughs> I just had a comment this morning talking to a guy, a lovely bloke, but he was saying I, uh, sometimes my uh, things are too long, and I, I, I said the issue is I always get questions from you guys, and I like, I like to answer them, so it's hard for me to stop uh, and make them things short because I really want to give you as much information uh, as I can. I mean, initially I wanted these to go for 15 minutes, but it's just not going to happen. Um, but tomorrow... Uh, we're going to do the flash side of things, so we'll talk about that. That may be a little bit quicker, uh, and then we'll move on from there. Um, so, guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Um, we'll get as many people on board as we can, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video at the same time uh, where we'll go through um, the flashes and uh, stuff that I use as well. All right, so uh, that's bye for now. Any questions, leave them down below. And thanks so much for watching, guys. I can't wait to start sharing all the other stuff that we're going to look through uh, with this business.